Jesus Christ, Christ my Savior, Savior. I'm safe and, and secure from all alone. Oh, yes, I'm leaning on Jesus Christ, my Savior. To walk in this pilgrim way, leading on the everlasting on. Oh, how bright the path rose from day to day, leading on the everlasting on. Oh, yes, I'm to Christian Tabernacle Church. We're located here in Evansville, Indiana, where our pastor is Elder Wayne M. Harris, and we're so glad that you've joined us today. We're leaning on Jesus, Christ our Savior. We're leaning on his everlasting arm, and we thank God for you being with us today and praying for us, and that this time, Pastor Harris... Well, praise the Lord again. Greetings in the precious name of the Lord Jesus. We're just so glad that you have joined with us in our live stream. We pray that it will be a, a blessing to you. And we pray that God will give all of us an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying in this hour. i just remind you that we do have service tonight at 6 p.m. And then 6.30, we'll, so it's prayer at 6 p.m. And... Uh, or eating worship at 6.30. Um, remember that next uh, is Wednesday. Wednesday we will not be having service here, nor will we have a Thanksgiving service here on Thursday. Um, we're looking forward to being with family in Texas, and we pray that God will just give us that safe trip. There are so many needs as we look across our nation around the world. There's still so much violence, death, destruction. People are discouraged. People are broken. Uh, people are with heavy hearts. Yes. We still have the wars that are raging in Ukraine, uh, Sudan, yes. Israel, Gaza. And you know, in wars, there are a lot of innocent people that end up being hurt. Being a veteran myself, having being sent to Vietnam, uh, it's the soldiers, the little guys, because of some other guys who are higher up, make decisions. Yes. Now, they won't put themselves on the front lines, right. but they'll easily send others yes. to do the fighting. Yes. And I'm, I'm, only, I'm just of the persuasion that if some of these who make those decisions if they have to go on the front line, they would find a way to avoid some of this fighting. Yes. But as long as they can commit others to the battle, to the front lines, while they stay behind, it's easy to do that. But we want to pray because there's so much pain, so much hurt. Then there's people that are just sick. And so if you'll stand with me, we're going to pray that God will help us. Dear God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you that you have allowed us one more time to gather together in your house. Lord, we're praying for those who are here. We are praying for those, dear God, that will join us later. We're praying for those around the world that, oh God, are just seeking your face and wanting to know truth. We pray, God, for those, dear God, who are caught in the 
crossfires of these wars and the innocent people that are suffering, that are struggling, that are hurting, uh, the ones who are being, being denied food and shelter because of the wars. I pray, God, uh, that the day will come when we will study war no more. Uh, I pray, oh God, that the day will come when we have that new heaven and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. I, 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 I pray, dear God, that the day will come uh, when, the, when the Prince of Peace uh, will reign supreme uh, and we'll have peace on earth uh, and goodwill toward men. Uh, we ask you, dear God, to remember the families that are broken, the families that are going through turmoil. And, oh God, I pray that you will remember those who are struggling, Lord, uh, the single mothers, the single fathers, uh, the children that are caught up in these dysfunctional families. Uh, well, I pray, God, for the prisons, uh, the prisoners uh, that are behind the walls. Uh, oh God, that they are hear the gospel uh, and be set free. Uh, I pray, God, for repentance. And I, I pray for revival. Uh, I pray for the president, Lord, uh, the cabinet, the each branch of our government, Lord. Uh, we have all of these people uh, that sit in high places, uh, oh God, and they make decisions uh, that affect our lives. Uh, but my prayer, dear God, uh, that you will touch their hearts uh, because the heart of the king uh, is in their hand. And I pray, God, uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, that we will yet have revival uh, that yet uh, there will be a move of God uh, Lord that you will help us right now uh, Lord God remember those uh, out of the ark of safety uh, in this hour uh, we're praying dear God uh, for revival dear God uh, oh help us right now Lord we need you Jesus we need you Lord uh, we need your help we're praying for those that are sick. So many are sick. So many, so many have sicknesses in their bodies. We're praying, dear God, uh, for healing and deliverance. Uh, those that are troubled in their mind, uh, oh God, that they'll be delivered from demonic oppression and depression. I pray, God, uh, that we'll see a move of God. Uh, we'll see the hand of God. Uh, oh God, before you come back for the church, uh, I pray that people, oh God, will understand that they need to get ready. Uh, Lord, help us, help us, help us. Uh, those of us who know the truth, uh, that we'll get out and share the truth. Uh, oh God, before it's too late, we pray, God, remember this community, this neighborhood, this church, this ministry. You have planted us here. We ask God that you will touch hearts and minds. Send an increase. Let your will be done. And we'll give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord again. Thank God for this opportunity. This time to be here in the house of God. Hearts are heavy. Some are, are rejoicing. But our hearts are kind of heavy this morning, even though I, our sister wasn't here in body. But we always felt it in spirit that she was here. We, we miss her already. But I thank God this morning for being able to be here. <clears throat> And lift up the name of Jesus. I won't complain. It's the song this morning. A lot of things have happened in our lives. And especially with loss of loved ones. But when we look around and think things over, we can thank God. I won't complain. I've had some good days And I've had some hills to climb I've had some weary nights 
and weary days but when I look around glory and think things over all of my good days outweigh the bad days so I won't complain sometimes sometimes the clouds hang low and I I like to see them go and now I'll ask the question, Lord. Lord, why so much pain? But he knows what's best for me. Though my eyes, they cannot see. I'll just say, hey, hey, thank you, Lord. I, I, I won't complain. You see, God has been good to me. Lord, he's been so very good to me. More than, more than this old world could ever be. Glory. He's been good to me. He turns the tears away. He turns my midnights into day. I'm just gonna say thank you, Lord. I, I won't complain. You know, sometimes, sometimes the clouds, they hang low. And I, I like to see them go and I'll ask I'll ask the question Lord Lord so was so much pain but he knows he knows what's best for me These weary eyes, they cannot see. So I'll just, I'll just say, thank you, Lord. I, I won't, I won't complain, Lord. God so very good to me more than more than this world could ever be glory he's been good he's been good to me he tried tears away he'll turn every midnight into day glory oh so I'll 
I'll just say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I, I won't complain. One more time. God has. God has. My God has been good to me. He's, he's been so, he's been so very good to me. More than, more than this world could ever be. He's been good. My God's been good to me. He drives the tears away. He'll turn, he'll turn, he'll turn every midnight into day. So I'll. I'm just going to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I, I won't complain. Praise the Lord again. Thank God for that beautiful selection. I won't complain. Uh, and life is just what it is. You know, you've heard the saying, it is what it is. <laughs> and life does not always bring us sunshine. We have rain. And we look at our seasons, you have winter. You have spring, you have summer and fall, and each season has different conditions. Somewhere it's real cold, sometimes it's too hot, sometimes it's rainy and stormy. You have hurricane season, uh, uh, earthquake <laughs> uh, season or whatever, but life is like that. But the good thing about it is I know that Jesus is in control. And whatever happens to me, I'm coming out. I'm coming out all right. When the, I reminded in the Bible when Jairus had the daughter that was sick. Not only was his daughter was sick, but it was his only child. Only child was sick and she was um, at the point of death. He got the message. Jesus said uh, it was going with him to, to heal her. And when the, uh, the messenger came and said, don't trouble the master any farther. She's already dead. She's already gone. And you know what Jesus said? Be not afraid. Only believe. And that's what we have to remember. Whatever we, when the devil brings you the worst possible news, the worst possible scenario. Don't give in to that and throw in the tile because you got to believe that there's somebody greater and his name is Jesus. And uh, I can go on and on and tell you how great he is and how, what great things he's done, but we're going to move on right now. Um, we just serve an awesome God. I, I won't complain. And it's, it's good to get in that place when you've grown spiritually. Where you don't complain. But if you just hold on, you know the season is going to change, right? Weeping made what? Endure for a night. But what? Joy cometh in the morning. I mean, it's not going to be forever. And just like with those seasons, some people don't like the winter. Well, just hold on because... Uh, uh, spring is coming, and uh, you're going to have a change. So, hey, I've learned I don't pray, uh, uh, complain. I, just, I spend my time praising God.
and praying to God. So I'm good, I'm good. In the book of Matthew, excuse me, in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter number 15. Matthew, Matthew, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. You want to jot this down, jot this down. 1 Corinthians chapter number 15, I'm going to read three verses. Then we're going to Romans 10 and 16. We're going to Mark. All right, I'm going to see if I can tie it all together. I'm going to try, okay? In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, it says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Verse 4, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scripture. So that's the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now let's look at Romans 10 and 16. Let's see what that says. Romans chapter 10 and 16, Paul writes in another place. Romans 10 and 16. He says, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah said, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So before they can obey the gospel, they have to what? Hear the gospel, all right? And then in Mark chapter 16, Mark chapter 16. Need a Marshallese Bible? Okay. Mark chapter 16, verse number. I'm going to start at verse 14. Mark chapter 16, I'm going to start at verse number 14. Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart. Because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. Now you got to catch this. And he said unto them, go ye all into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. We just established in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 1, 2, 3, and 4. The gospel is what? The death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And we'll explain a little bit why that is. Good news. That's what the gospel is. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Now, you, you see that? He that believeth, Mark chapter 16 and verse 16, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. I asked the bishop one day of a certain denomination, I said, do you have to be baptized to be saved? He said, no. Why do you say that? Because am I, am I putting something in there that shouldn't be there? It plainly says, Jesus is talking. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Okay. He was wrong, but he's still a bishop. But he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them, what? That believe. In my name shall they cast out demons. They shall speak with new tongues. And when you get the Holy Ghost, you're going to speak in other tongues, all right? They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. All right? Now, so I think I've, I've covered those. So we're going to talk to you today about the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's the most important message today. The gospel of Jesus Christ. It's the only message that can save us. The only one that can help us. After about 1,600, 1,600 years of mankind, that's from Adam, judgment came in the form of the flood. 
We know it as the flood in Noah's day. About 1,600 years had transpired, and God brought judgment. Why? Well, in Genesis chapter 6 and verse 5, it speaks of the wickedness of man was great in the earth. It also says every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continuously. Now, if wickedness is great, thoughts in your heart are evil, that means you're dealing with an unrighteous generation. It means we're dealing with a generation who refuses to worship God. In Genesis chapter 6, around verse 11, it says, the earth was corrupt before God. Just rotten. It says also the earth was filled with violence. It's about, it, sounds like, it sounds like we're talking about today, right? Now, before the flood, about 1,000 years after Adam, uh, in the midst of all this ungodliness, unrighteousness, corruption, and violence, there was a man named Enoch. He had the testimony. The Bible says Enoch did what? Walk with God. That's, what, that's our challenge today. We are surrounded by so much corruption, violence, ungodliness, people that just don't care. If you're not, be, if you, if you're not vigilant, if you're not watchful, you will find yourself just falling away with the uh, blending in with the ungodliness of today's society. But Enoch was a type of the church because he walked with God. You cannot be ungodly and walk with God. And instead of dying as men were in that day, the Bible says he was not. He was not found because he was translated because God took him. It's kind of like what we're waiting on right now. We're waiting on those who are walking with God that there's going to come a time when we are going to be caught up out of this world. And then we'll forever be with the Lord. Adam's sin, you've heard of Adam's sin. He ate of the forbidden fruit. Adam sinned, he disobeyed God. We usually think of sin as a fornication, murder, lying, stealing, robbery, things like that. But Adam's sin was he just disobeyed God. And when Adam disobeyed God, he opened the gates and sin took over. He opened I would say he opened the floodgates, and sin just kept on, kept on, kept on. Now, after about 1,600 years from the creation of Adam, mankind was destroyed because of the, through the flood. Now, after the flood, go to Genesis chapter 9, and verse 1, God instructed Noah and his sons to what? Be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth. However, men or mankind in that day had another agenda. In their pride, they started building the Tower of Babel with the intent of reaching into heaven Genesis chapter 11, 3 and 4. And to make a name for themselves. And we saw from this point God sent a language and confused. He, he, sent, he, he broke up that. They had one language up until that time. But that was too much cooperation. They were doing the wrong thing. So God sent them. Uh, he sent different languages in. And they couldn't communicate. Didn't know what was going on. So they just kind of disbanded. Abandoned that project and went on. Mankind drifted into idolatry and moved farther away from God. 
When Adam sinned, when Adam sinned, he broke the fellowship between God and man. Before the foundation of the world, God foresaw the fall of man and created a plan to restore his fellowship with man. God used a man named Abraham to set in motion his plan to bring our Savior, Redeemer, and Mediator into the world. Abraham spoke prophetically in Genesis chapter 22 and verse 8. When speaking to Isaac, Isaac who was uh, that obedient son, uh, being a type of Christ, he, he, he was willingly laying there, uh, letting his father bind him, set him up with a sacrifice. And, and so Isaac said, well, well, well Dad, uh, Father, uh, where, is the, where is the lamb? And Abraham spoke to him and said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. We're talking about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Mankind had fallen so far short of the mark. And Paul had to write in another place, for all have sinned and come short of the mark. Men had not met the expectation that God has set for us. And we were in need of a mediator, a savior, a redeemer. In John chapter 1 and verse 29, we see where it says, quote, the next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. So here we have John Baptist was making known to the, those at that time, the Jews, that the Savior had come. A Lamb. Why a Lamb? That, well, that's God's prerogative to choose a Lamb. Because a lamb is gentle, he's kind. A lamb was used for sacrifice. So all those sacrifices in the Old Testament was pointing to Christ, who was going to be the sacrifice or the sacrificial lamb for the whole world. Everybody couldn't be the sacrifice. It had to be somebody without blemish. It had to be somebody that was in the will of God. And Jesus became that sacrifice. We're talking about the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you understand this, God is what? Spirit. God is spirit. The Bible declares that without the shedding of blood, Hebrews chapter 9, there is no remission of sin. Sins cannot be forgiven. Sins cannot be blotted out unless there's a shedding of blood. And only Jesus Christ was the one to have the blood. You understand that God is spirit. Nobody else was good enough uh, to qualify to shed their blood for mankind. So God did what? He put himself in flesh so he would have blood to shed. Isn't that wonderful? When he realized nobody else could bring salvation, he said, I will do a miracle. <laughs> I'm going to come myself. And he came through Mary, begotten by the Holy Ghost, and he came into the world. The Bible says he came unto his own, his own received him not. But to many as received him, he gave them the power 
to become sons of God. He made it possible that those of us who believed in him could become sons of God. Um, this gospel was good news because we had fallen short of the mark. The Jews, they had a peculiar attitude. The Jews, they felt, well, because they were the descendants of Abraham, that they automatically get a pass. And they thought because Abraham was their father, they would automatically uh, uh, qualify for eternal life. But nobody can have eternal life without Jesus Christ. Uh, the Jews thought they had it made. They felt secure. But their own scripture proved them wrong. Uh, Psalm number 14. Psalm number 14 verses what? One through three. Let me show you that. You might need it. You, you might find it handy. But Psalm chapter 14. Look what it says. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. All right? The Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand and seek God. They are all gone aside. They are all altogether become filthy. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. So what does Paul say about this? He said their own scripture to condemn them and said, Jews, the Bible already says there's none righteous, none good, no, not one. But what happened to the Jews? They were looking for a Messiah when they really needed a Savior. So the Savior had to come first, and now they're, look, they're still looking for the Messiah, and he's going to come. Jesus Christ was Messiah, but at first, before he could do the works of the Messiah, he had to do the works of a Savior, which required the shedding of blood. The good news, the good news is the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's the only thing that can help us. Sin broke Man's relationship with God always will. Sin broke man's relationship with God. And because of what Adam did, we are all born as sinners. And because of what Adam did, we all need a Savior. None of us are good enough to go to heaven without Jesus. We all need Jesus. It's through Jesus Christ that we are reconciled to God, brought back into fellowship with God. Jesus brought about the atonement, the atonement. When you look at the word atonement, you need to think of at one man. Atonement, look at at one. So what happens? It's through Jesus Christ that we become one with, with God. Again, without that breach. Jesus Christ himself said, I am the way, the truth, and the what? Life. No man cometh unto the Father but what? By me. 1 Timothy 2 and 5 says, Neither, There is only one mediator between God and man. Only one. His name is Jesus. Not Muhammad. They have, he has many followers. And some people are made to follow with the threat of your life. They threaten you to become a Muslim. And now it's got a foothold. But somebody better wake up. Because only Jesus Christ is the way. He's the, he's the only good news. But you see, as Paul writes in another place, many have not what? Obeyed the gospel. What is the gospel? What's the good news? That Jesus died for our sins. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. 
Jesus was buried and that he rose again. Sometimes people think, well, I'll just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and I'll get salvation. My mind goes back to the children of Israel when they were in Egypt. You remember that? They had been crying for 400 years. They wanted to get out of Egypt. And so the Lord sent Moses over there to lead them out of Egypt into the promised land. Now, I like, I like Moses. I like Moses because, well, Moses was 80 years old before God called him to do the greatest work. So I still have, I still have some years left. I can still be optimistic at 77 years old. I, I still have hope that God can still use me to do something for God. Abraham spent 40 years in obscurity and barrenness. But now when you talk about the children of Israel, you cannot talk about Israel without talking about Moses. Moses was, he was a, he was the man. I, I, I'm always amazed how he would get all the revelation about Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. He wrote all that. He's the author of those. The Pentateuch, it's called. The first five books of the Bible. And then when God took him up there and he gave him all these dimensions about how to make the tabernacle and, and how, how, how wide and how, how long and, and all these dimensions. And he, when he said, now when you get down there, I want you to make it according to the pattern. People act like God don't know what, he, what, what he's saying and he doesn't mean what he says. But God says what he means and means what he says. There's a pattern to this gospel. There's a pattern, not a little see to the plan of salvation. And we better wake up and find and search and seek to find what is God saying in this hour. I'm going to take you back. God said, I'm getting ready to bring them out, Moses. He said, now, I've, I've, they've had a lot of, I've had a lot of miracles and, and, and Pharaoh changes his mind. He said, but this time, when I do this one, he said, he's going to thrust, they're going to throw you out. So he said, I, what I want you to do, Moses, I want you to tell everybody, this, here, this is the gospel, see. Because he said, I'm going to send a death angel. Death angel is going to go through the land, and it's going to strike the firstborn of every household, all the animals. Well, the firstborn is going to die. And the only way they can survive the death threat They've got to know the gospel. They've got to know the good news. Well, God didn't give the good news to them. But he gave it to Moses. And Moses said, here's the good news. Get your lamb without spot, blemish, because we got to be a type of Christ. All right? Slay him at a certain time. Christ had to die at a certain time. And then he said, and you catch that blood, and you... Apply the blood. Side post of your house, top post, lentil. He said, that, and, and then when you after that, now you got to make sure that you stay inside. Because, I, because I'm getting ready to send the death angel. I'm gonna loose him here. And he's gonna come out, and if he sees the blood, hallelujah, he'll pass over your house. But if he does not see the blood, death is coming in there. And because they had the gospel, because they obeyed the gospel, killed the lamb, applied the blood, the, and they stayed inside, the death angel didn't touch them. Now, watch this. They believed the gospel, and they applied the blood. The blood was shed. But they were still in Egypt. Am I right? Am I right? Sure I'm right. So don't think you can just stand and say, well, I believe in Jesus. I believe he died for my sins, and, and, and you're going to make it? No, sir. You got to have that blood applied. Ain't you heard the song, there till my heart was the blood applied. They applied it naturally 
They had to get, get something, so hear something, something and, and, and apply their blood. But now we applied by faith. By faith. What am I saying? We believe that his death and the blood he shed was the ransom that was required for us to be able to obtain salvation. So we have the blood be you can't have, uh, 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 he, he shed his blood, okay? That was the death. That's just part of the gospel. But then after that, he, 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 he died, he was buried in water. And then he rose again. That's a type of receiving the Holy Ghost. People overlook that. And they think, I can just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and pew, that's it. I had a good conversation with my brother-in-law just this week, and it was a good conversation. And we did go to the conclusion that Jesus said, except a man be born again, water and the spirit, he what? Cannot enter the kingdom of God. So you can stand there all the day and say, well, I believe in Jesus. Where's the water baptism? Where's the spirit baptism? I mean, come on, folks. Uh, if Jesus said you, you had to be born again in water and spirit, then I, I, I think I better be finding me some water and be seeking for the spirit if I plan to go to heaven. You can't go to heaven just because uh, you believe. Because the Bible says the devil believes in one God and he trembles. You can pick up drug addicts, alcoholics, fornicators, uh, uh, backslidden folk and just say, do you believe in Jesus? Yeah, I believe in him. That won't put you into the kingdom. The secret is you have to obey the gospel and then you have to live that what? Holy and sanctified life. So here we have man having broken that relationship with God and here we have Christ. In the fullness of time, Christ came. We mean the fullness of time. The time when God got ready for him to come, he came. And he did what he was supposed to do. I mean, how hard is it to be born and, 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 and you think, what's going on? And there, you, how many, how many you can, can live a good life knowing that if you come in, you're really going to die? What do you have to look forward to? I mean, how does that affect your everyday life? Probably not too good. But you know, Jesus was able to do all the will of the Father. He never drew back. He kept doing everything he was supposed to do. He was that perfect sacrifice. And you know what? As I keep growing and growing up, I want to be like him. I want to be like that song said, to be like Jesus, but to be like him on earth I long to be like him. All through life's journey from earth to glory. I don't know what All only ask to be like him. Jesus said, I am the way. Nobody else is. I'm not wasting my time food with nobody else. I just want to be like Jesus. And when he says, no man come to the Father but by me, that's it. And you know what Jesus said in another place? He said, in John chapter 10, you, you read that. He says, I'm the door. I am the door. Everybody that came before me, they're a thief or robber. They're a fraud. They're not it. So everything before Christ that's not it. And then when you look, read John 14 and 6, and he said, nope, I am the way, truth, and life. So anybody that came after Christ that's trying to tell you that they are the way, you know they are lying. I'm not afraid. I don't care how many visions you tell me you saw. I don't care how many the angels saw. But the word is already there. Paul said, though we, ha, da, 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 bo, see ya. Paul said, listen, I know who I am. I'm an apostle. And if I come back and preach something to you that you haven't heard, then don't receive it. Don't believe it. And he said, if an angel come down and said, ha, da, 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 bo, see ya. I don't care what they're speaking in all kinds of tongues. And they work miracles and signs and wonders. Paul said, don't fall for none of that. There's only one gospel. 
There's only one gospel. There's only one good news that's going to get us out of here. At the appointed time, Christ died. When are we going to die? When are we going to give up? When are we going to quit? Turn from sin. The good news is that if you can do one and two, then three, hey, you're going to have eternal life. Isn't that what we want? I am so thankful that God brought me back from Vietnam. And even before Vietnam, I knew some things. I, yeah, maybe y'all don't know. Maybe you didn't go through this. But I knew there were some things I was doing that was not right. I, I did. I knew there were things I was doing that were not right. I knew it was wrong. But I did it because I didn't have the power. Sin was driving me and causing me to do things that I should not have done. But you know what? I look back and I see how merciful God was. How good he was. How God allowed me to go out all that time I spent in the world enjoying the pleasure of sin for a season. Uh, God allowed me to go out there and enjoy all of that. And then uh, God allowed me one day in 1973 uh, to go to a little church, uh, hear the true preach, uh, and decide I'm going to obey this gospel. It's one thing to read it. Uh, it's one thing to believe it. Uh, but it's one thing to obey it. Uh, and that's what needs to happen today. Hallelujah. I'm glad I obeyed the gospel. I'm glad that God gave me an opportunity to be saved. And you know what? I'm like in, I think it's 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 14. I want to get there real quick. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 14. Paul was writing again. I mean, we are so grateful for that great man of God. But he kept on writing. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 14, Paul writes, For the love of Christ, for the love of Christ constraineth us. Because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. Do you understand what I'm saying? Everybody was on our way to hell. If you're not saved, you're on your way to hell. The love of Christ, the, the love that Christ had for us. I mean, I mean, I mean, he could have got out of it. He, but he, he said, Father, not my will, but thy will be done. He agonized at Gethsemane to take that final step. And then we got up. He said, not my will, Lord. But thy will be done. And we all ought to be living to do God's will. What force is that that, that that inspires him, that drives him, that compels him to live for God? It's the love of Christ. Verse 15, he said, and that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves but unto him which died for them and arose again. When you have experienced this gospel it's not about you anymore. I'm living for Christ. Some people wonder well, why, do you, why do you keep going like you do? Why do you keep coming and preaching to these empty pews? Uh, why do you keep passing out cards and why do you keep inviting people and get disappointed? Because of love of Christ. Do you know how many people he healed? He healed multitudes. You, you know how many people he fed for free? 5,000? 3,000? And you know how many showed up on the day of Pentecost to, to, to try to receive the Holy Ghost? Only 120. What happened to everybody? Well, that's the way folk are. That's the way folk are. They're not going to hang around.
Folk are not going to hang around. Um, you're as good as your last favor. You know, once they get blessed, uh, folk kind of move on. But when you are in Christ, when you appreciate what God has done for you, there's nothing you won't do for God. I am serious. That's why we pray. That's why we fast. That's why we give alms. That's why we live holy. That's why we come to church. Amen. That's why we gather together. That's why we witness because that's what Christ wanted us to do. I have no right to be standing before you today because all the things that I did before I got saved. But I feel like, Paul, that grace and mercy was not in vain. Paul said, I labored more abundantly than them all. So here we're concluding now this message about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let me see if I can make it, put it together here. The gospel speaks of good news. What's the good news? Jesus Christ came into this world. He shed his blood because it took his blood that we could be reconciled back to God. He came into this world, willingly died for us. We weren't even worthy. I mean, we weren't. We sat out there and enjoyed the pleasures of sin. But when I got an understanding now how God has just blessed me to be able to have eternal life, I'm just sold out. I'm going to give it back to him. Sometimes people, you, you heard me say it before, I always promised God. This is way back, 73, 74, I promised God. I said I was not going to lay out. I wasn't going to miss. It took me about five years before I finally missed a service, I think, in, in, in church. That's how faithful I was. I, I mean, I was just glad to be saved. I wasn't going to lay out. I wasn't going to rust out. You know, rust sets in when you, 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 don't, you, don't, you don't get the oil and you don't use something to just kind of rust and, and it becomes... Uh, um, damaged. I wasn't going to be like that. I wasn't going to just sit around. But I promised the Lord that I would wear out for the kingdom of God. And sometimes I, when I feel like I'm worn out, that's when he renews my strength day by day. Somebody said, you don't even look your age. Well, it's not about me. It's about him. Amen. There's a, there's a, there's a, a scripture in Psalm 31. And uh, the lady was prophesying and, and she said that, oh yeah, and Psalm 31 and verse 23. Psalm 31 and verse 23, he says, Oh, love the Lord, all ye his saints, for the Lord preserveth the faithful. He preserveth the what? Faithful. Be faithful. And you can look for God to bless. Uh, I mean, I don't think there's no greater privilege. Nothing greater than, I, than serving God. That beats being president of the United States. It being, it, it beats, it, it's more, that's greater than, than getting a uh, MVP. Most valuable player, whatever sport there may be, there's nothing greater. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the greatest news we've ever heard. When we thought we were lost and Satan thought he had us, God came in and sent Jesus. And so today, the gospel is death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And how do we obey the gospel? Well, 
Let me take it. Will you let scripture? Will you, will you believe the scripture? Okay, let's go to Acts chapter 2, verse 37, 38. And I think we're about done. Acts chapter 2, verse 37. You want to know, how do we obey the scripture? Now, when they heard this, Acts chapter 2 and verse 37, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. There it is. How do you obey the gospel? You repent of sins. You turn away from sins. Get a different attitude. You understand this. You can, sin is no longer going to be a part of your life. Instead of walking in sin, you're going to walk in righteousness, doing things that please the Lord. Then you are to be what? Baptized in water in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is a type of burial where you can have your sins, what? Washed away. And then you need to seek God to be filled with the Holy Ghost, which is evidenced by speaking in other tongues. Friends, ladies and gentlemen, there is nothing greater than the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you're here today, or you're hearing my voice, then you need to come. It's time to be saved. You don't want to put it off. You, want to, you don't want to wait. Because you may never have this opportunity again. I was telling one of my sons in a backslider. I said, son, don't keep waiting. Because I need you to understand this. When the catching the wheel of the saints take place when we're called up. Some call it the rapture. It's a Latin, from a Latin term, raptus. When the saints are called up, you won't get a second chance. You won't get a chance to say, well, oh, oh I know the seven more years, it's going to be over. I'm going to church tonight. No, nope, it's too late. The Bible says God is going to send you strong delusions so that you will believe a lie and that you will not be saved because what? You loved unrighteousness more than the truth. Is anybody here? Now listen, y'all need to be sharing this with somebody. You, you got loved ones. If they don't get saved, they're going to be lost. You better tell them the truth. One of the things I, 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 I took very seriously, and that's being the head of my household. I wanted my family saved. I want them saved. And they grew up getting the Holy Ghost, getting the Holy Ghost, getting the Holy Ghost. Some are still in the way. And some are out of the way. But there's only one way. Whenever you decide to come back, it will be the gospel of Jesus Christ. I won't beg you to come in because if I beg you to come, I'll have to beg you to stay. You come because you know you won't. You are lost, and you want to be saved. If you're here today, you want to be saved? Or maybe you want to come for prayer. Whatever you need, you can come right now because I'm done. I've given you what God has given me.